El proyecto de la NASA, donde participa la Universidad de Antofagasta, lleva el nombre de ARATS, Perforación Robótica para Fines Astrobiológicos, y tiene como propósito comprobar la presencia de colonias microbianas debajo de la superficie marciana, por lo que se ensayará primero en el desierto. Llego hasta el campamento en la estación Yungay para reunirme con Brian Glass, líder del equipo e investigador principal. Brian, when did you arrive to Chile and to this place? Oh, we've just arrived in the past few days, over this past weekend, maybe four days ago. Uh, the first several days we were setting up this camp and setting up our equipment. So this is the first full day that we've all been here. So. And how many people uh, form your team? Well, my team for the AirEds project has about 45 people in six countries, but of the people who are here for this set of tests, we have eight foreigners coming in, plus University of Antofagasta, so we have maybe 11 who are here this time. And it's difficult to work in these conditions? <laughs> ah, these are fun conditions. Very I just, windy, It is windy warm. in the afternoon, it is very, very, very dry, it just pulls the moisture out of you, and It's very, very barren. There's nothing alive. So that's one of the reasons we like it. If we want to do astrobiology, if we want to find life on Mars or other places, we have to find instruments that can detect very low, very quiet levels of life. There's very little life here. It is a very, almost a dead place. If I go and look at the soil down here, There's uh, very few microbes. It's very low signal, very little life. So we, it's very Mars-like because the level of life is almost undetectable. So we, ne we need to go to some place that's very Mars-like, very low life, very little life to uh, try to find ways to search for life on Mars. If we, if, if we can detect it here, then that gives us confidence we can detect it there. Brian, for what is this instrument? This is a prototype of a drill that we hope to send to Mars. It's been proposed for a mid-2020s mission called Icebreaker. It can drill through basalt or through harder rocks, and it's automated. It, uh, we have artificial intelligence and robotics techniques that monitor the drilling and adjust to faults and uh, can keep it from getting stuck in the hole, which we have to do on Mars because it takes 10 minutes to get a signal back from Mars. So if it gets stuck, by the time you know there's a problem, 10 seconds, it's too late. So how do you drill on Mars? We have to have it very robotic, very automated, and that's what we do with this drill. Brian, talk to me about this project, ARADS. ARADS is an attempt to recreate or to try to put the pieces together mm -hmm. of something that was proposed as the Astrobiology Field Laboratory. It was a curiosity-sized rover for Mars that was going to be launched in 2016 that would have life detection instruments and a drill and a means to transport sample back and forth. So. What we've done is we've brought together those pieces as prototypes. We have life detection instruments, chemical instruments. We have a drill that can go over a meter. We have a, a you know, sample transfer arm. So we bring these pieces from uh, multiple countries. And then finally this year, we are going to run a simulated mission where we control it remotely from thousands of kilometers away. And you're looking for this mission to Mars in, two, uh, in 2025? It's hard to say what the actual schedule would be, and we, one of the things we have to know before humans can go to Mars, whether that's private or uh, publicly supported, is, is their life. Are they going to either you know, encounter a life forms when they get there, or this, you know, past life? We have the planetary protection issue. 
that planetary protection is not about invaders from space, except we become the invaders if we go <laughs> to Mars. So what microbes do I bring with me if I cough? <laughs> then I've just thrown out all these millions of uh, microbes, potentially. Or if there's anything alive on Mars, suppose we send people and they die. So we have to know this before we can send the people. So we may have to do this sooner than we think. What is your personal motivation to work in this? My own personal motivation to work in this is, um, I guess I want to find, are we alone in the universe? I want to see the technology and the capabilities of humanity as a whole expand to where we can not just travel to other places, but also know about those places and know how this all came together. Are we the only place that life arose? Those are all just fascinating, life-motivating questions for me, at least. Wow, increíble. Es que la pregunta que nos hacemos todos, ¿estamos solos en este universo? Y también pienso que es imposible. ¿Cómo vamos a ser los únicos seres con vida acá en la Tierra? Yo creo que tiene que existir vida en otros planetas. Lo que pasa es que todavía no tenemos la tecnología o las distancias son tan largas para poder conectarnos. Quizás todo está hecho perfectamente para a lo mejor no encontrarnos, pero que existan personas motivadas como Brian con un equipo detrás que viene acá a Chile, también darnos cuenta que Chile no solamente es un lugar para poder observar el cielo, sino que también estudiar la tierra y ser privilegiados en eso y dar cuenta que hay personas que realmente están apasionadas por eso. Es lo máximo poder encontrarme con gente como Brian y estar con personas que trabajan en la NASA aquí en nuestro país.